I'm not a night owl. I think we actually overestimate how many people are genetically night owls. I thought I was a night owl too until I started taking care of my sleep. And so this is how I went from being literally what I thought was a night owl to actually becoming a morning bird and actually loving to wake up early. I talk a lot about, you know, oh, you know, fix your sleep schedule, you know, get eight hours of sleep. But we never really talk about how do you actually get eight hours of sleep every single night? How do you actually get a consistent sleep schedule? So that's what we're going to discuss today. How do we actually get a solid seven and a half, eight hours sleep? Maybe even nine hours if you're lucky, okay? So let's really get into it. Here's how I did it. So first off, let's give a little backstory, okay? How bad was my sleep really throughout high school from literally 13 to 17? 17, every day I would come home and take a two hour nap and then I would not feel sleepy at night because I took a two hour nap in the daytime so then I'd sleep until like 3 a.m. and then the next day I'd be tired because I slept so little and then I would take a nap in the afternoon again and then it was a whole vicious little cycle that kept on going and going and going how do we even fix that okay if you're in this situation where you're just like literally getting like five hours of sleep and trying to like catch up on your sleep on the weekend that is not how you get to your good sleep and so today I'm really gonna show you how I perfected my sleep some tips from science and some tools that that I implemented myself and what helped me get my sleep to what it is now currently which is I go to sleep at 9 30 I wake up at 5 36 and I get on with my day and here's how you can do it too okay so let's get into it okay first of all I had to break the cycle of taking a nap and going to sleep at 3 a.m okay taking a nap in the middle of the day, literally not even in like 12 p.m. or 1 p.m. It was literally at 4 to 6, I would be sleeping. I would just like watch YouTube on my bed and fall asleep. And clearly there's a hundred million things wrong with that situation. So in order for me to get consistent sleep every night, I need to fix that cycle. So what did I do? I started to sleep at a consistent time every single day. And so that was the first thing. You need to be sleeping and waking up at consistent times every single day. You cannot just be catching up on your sleep on the weekends, okay? So let's say you have a sleep schedule of waking up at seven in the morning every single day, but on the weekends, you sleep until like nine, 10, 11 p.m. Then you need to fix that, okay? Because the buffer time here is plus or minus one hour, okay? If you wanna be getting a consistent sleep schedule, you need to be sleeping and waking up at the same time every single day, even on the weekends. For me at first, it was more of a required thing to do because I had morning classes, but then I'd have to wake up at like six or seven. Over time, it naturally grew upon me to sleep early and wake up early and have a good night rest because I find that if I sleep less than seven hours, bro, I am not functioning properly. I'm not even joking. Once you get into the habit of getting a good sleep hygiene you're not going back so that was the first thing is that i started sleeping at consistent times okay and that's a pretty okay thing to do you know it shouldn't be that hard if you have a regular routine going if you're going to work if you're going to school it shouldn't be too hard to implement just make sure on the weekends you wake up at the same time you do on the weekdays so that it's easier for you to keep a consistent habit of sleeping early and waking up early the second thing that i stopped doing was scrolling on my phone and consuming garbage media right before I went to sleep. This is really a big thing, okay? Because I know it's really fun to watch something before you go to sleep and fall asleep while you're watching something. I did that a lot. I used to do that a lot, okay? During the summers, I would binge watch so much anime and then I'd go right to sleep. I find that if I did other things on my bed, like scrolling to Instagram or scrolling to YouTube or watching shorts or watching reels or watching TikToks or watching YouTube or watching anime, I find that it was so hard for me to go to sleep, honestly, because it really made my mind active, which prevented me from falling asleep. Like if I'm doing anything, it's gonna be on my desk. Think of your bed as a sacred place where you go to sleep, okay? And make sure that your phone is not by your head when you go to sleep okay so this is something that i don't know if it's scientifically proven or not but one day literally like last week i accidentally had my phone on my bed i didn't have my phone on my bed for the past three months okay that day i ended up having my phone on my bed i thought no biggie you know whatever i'm just too lazy to put on my desk whatever okay i woke up with the worst sleep ever okay so don't have your phone on your bed next to your head okay have it on your desk have it on your nightstand have it on your charger okay don't have your phone next to you on your pillow on your bed just don't do anything on your bed okay this is like one of the biggest thing i stopped doing is that you know when i would come home and fall asleep after i came home from school i would be on my bed and i'd be watching something and then i'd be falling asleep that way okay so you cannot let your mind associate one thing with multiple different things at once you cannot associate your bed with watching anime or watching youtube or watching this and that and this and that and this and that you have to associate your bed with just sleeping and that's it so i completely stopped doing that okay i deleted instagram i deleted everything off my phone even if you don't have anything deleted off your phone just 
set an alarm for like 8 p.m. and that's when you know that you have to get off your phone get off your freaking phone get off your laptop and take some time to yourself instead okay before you sleep instead of scrolling on your phone instead of watching youtube instead of watching netflix or whatever or playing games or whatever take some time to yourself take some time to journal and reflect upon the day how did the day go did i do everything that i wanted to do what is my plans for tomorrow take some time for yourself it helps you to show up for yourself every single day instead of scrolling on your phone which hinders your sleep and makes you not be able to show up for yourself tomorrow show for yourself today by journaling and reflecting and getting a good night's sleep so you can be your best tomorrow so those are the two main things that i started doing was that i started sleeping and waking up at consistent times and two I started to really stop doing anything on my bed besides going to sleep. The next thing is controlling the cortisol spike that you get in the morning. So how do we actually control the amount of cortisol that is released when we wake up in the morning? So why do we even need this cortisol spike in the first place? Well, in order to wake up, your body actually needs a bit of the stress hormone running through so that your body can actually wake up, right? But if your body doesn't have the right amount of cortisol first thing in the morning, that cortisol spike might be delayed a bit more into the day, causing you to sleep later, right? So how can we actually control the cortisol spike? And so the two things that I recommend the most is first off, controlling your light exposure. When I started to control how much light I got in the morning and for how long I got in the morning, I started to naturally want to sleep earlier. I started to get sleepier earlier in the evening. I'd get sleepy about like 8.30, 8 o'clock. Get the light from the sky because that is really going to help you start waking up and sleeping at the correct times. It's about when your eyes are first getting in that high intensity light. The earlier that you have this cortisol spike, the earlier you will go to sleep. And I'm not talking about the light from your screen because the light from your screen is not bright enough to like activate those light sensors in your eyes, okay? Because first thing in the morning, the light receptors in your eyes need a lot of light, need a higher intensity of light to get activated and to tell your body, oh, start getting to wake up, start putting all these hormones to wake up the body. In the evening, we need to dim down the environment, okay? This is why they're saying not to be looking at screens before you go to sleep or within a couple hours going to sleep because the light from your screen is very bright. Think of the opposite of what you have in the morning. The receptors in your eyes for light are very sensitive now to the intensity of light. Even just a little bit of light can cause these receptors to fire up and to tell your body that it's time to not sleep. It's time to grind. It's time to do some work, you know? So that's why you need to dim down the environment, okay? Especially after dinner, after you eat, dim down the environment. If you have dimmable lights in your house, use them. If you have LED lights, put it onto the warmest setting, okay? Look at warm colors. Turn on all your devices on night shift after 5 p.m. or 6 p.m., okay? Don't let high intensity light into your eyes because that's really going to cause you to hinder the release of melatonin into your body. If you don't have light first thing in the morning, what do you do? You should actually exercise first thing in the morning. So what do I mean by exercising? I'm talking about exercising before like 2 p.m. Exercising is also one of those things that cause you to get that cortisol spike, right? So if you don't have bright light in the morning first thing because you wake up before the sunrise, I recommend you exercise because exercising also induces that same cortisol spike that you need in order to be able to fall asleep at night. When I really controlled this cortisol spike, I really told my body, hey, you gotta wake up at this time and then you gotta be sleeping and falling asleep at this time, okay? So when I really controlled it, that's when I really started to get proper sleep at night and that's when i started to really start falling asleep early in the evening right instead of like 12 a.m i start sleeping at like nine and not just exercising okay i want you to be incorporating movement throughout your day if you think that sitting on your ass all day and not moving one bit you're gonna be able to fall asleep at night no you can't <laughs> okay because if you're not even moving around your body is just like sedentary where is this cortisol spike gonna come from besides the light okay and let's say you're not even looking at that much light you're just looking at some light from your phone screen throughout the day it's like you're not going to be able to fall asleep at night that easily are you even if it's not exercising like a full-on gym workout just go on a walk in the morning if you have the time available go on a walk in the morning 20 minutes totally chill and then throughout the day every 30 minutes you know take a break for five minutes move around don't be staying still the whole day because that's gonna hinder the sleep. Just take a five to 10 minute break, walk around, do some push-ups, do some squats. So exercising and exercising at the right times is incredibly important in managing and setting your circadian rhythm in order to get consistent sleep every single night. So that's the two things that you need to do is to control the amount of light that you get in the morning. And second of all, is to be working out first thing in the morning. By controlling your cortisol spike in the morning, by controlling the amount of light that you have, 
you get to condition your body to become a morning bird once again okay because with our technologies it's so easy to condition our bodies to become a night owl and to do a lot of things at night when we're actually not meant to do a lot of things at night you know because it does feel like we can do anything at night but once you start actually conditioning your body to wake up and sleep at consistent times and actually wake up in the morning early then it's actually ends up being hard for you to do things at night and you find that your best ideas come in the morning regardless so that brings me to the end of my video let's just summarize what i've talked about so far because i feel like i've said a lot and it might have just flown through your head okay so what are your action steps in order to get a good night consistent sleep every single night first of all stop going on your phone before you sleep do not put your phone next to your head and put your phone on charge instead put your phone on your desk put your phone on your table do something do not put your phone on your bed okay use your bed for sleeping purposes only do not be scrolling youtube do not be scrolling instagram do not be doing whatever on your bed just be sleeping on your bed okay third of all control the amount of light that you get in the morning and in the evening make sure that you get enough light in the morning and make sure that you're getting that proper cortisol spike in the morning so that you are able to actually fall asleep in the evening you actually feel sleepy in the evening okay in addition with that in order to get that cortisol spike you want to really just exercise as early as you can don't exercise so goddamn late okay exercise as early as you can go on a walk just incorporate movement throughout the day so you're tired enough to actually fall asleep because i remember back when i was in summer break in high school i would just be on my ass all day i'd be on my bed watching anime binge watching everything and i wouldn't even feel tired enough to go to sleep so that made me want to sleep less okay so make sure that you are incorporating movement throughout the day and make sure you are looking at enough light throughout the day fourth thing is make sure you don't go to sleep stuffed or hungry okay make sure that you go to sleep at a neutral level of hunger not too hungry not too full just neutral okay you just feel regular you don't feel hungry you don't feel full you're just, just regular okay i don't know whatever that means but whatever that means and do something else besides scrolling on your phone before you go to sleep okay and so those were my main tips and what i did in order to get a good night's rest every single night and start sleeping at consistent times every single night okay so with all those habits all combined and successfully mingling all together i perfected my sleep and now i get consistent sleep every single night and i fall asleep at the same time naturally keep in mind that this process is going to take a while okay you're not going to be able to get consistent sleep just like that it's going to be a small build up over time okay so just try and implement these habits okay try what's best for you every body is different and every body needs different things okay so this is all your theory and you need to be an experimentalist now okay you need to implement this theory and see what works out for you become your own scientist and if you find that something terribly does not work for you your body will tell you immediately okay try something out give it like a few weeks give it a month even and see how it works for your body and then continue implementing other things to help get consistent sleep every single night if this video provided you with some sort of value consider liking subscribing or sharing it to someone who would also find it useful and to help support the channel if you want to read these videos before they're released consider subscribing to my weekly newsletter glow up fridays where every friday i will give you bite-sized motivation in order for you to improve your life link is in the description box i'm krisha and i will see you next week